All right, welcome back to The Real Story. I'm Matt Karen. We want to continue our conversation about policing uh, with State Representative Brandon McGee. He is a Democrat from Hartford Re and Windsor, representing Hartford and Windsor. He is also the co-chair of the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus. Brandon, always great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Matt. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So let's just jump right in. Uh, I know the governor put out the executive order, which does a lot, but in order to enact change at the local municipal level, there has to be some legislation, and we are quickly racing toward an anticipated special session to do just that. Uh, what, in your mind, are the specific elements of a police reform and accountability bill uh, that are going to be crucial? Yeah, and, and, you know, thank you so much again for this opportunity and asking uh, the question, uh, which has been floating around for some time. Um, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, say thank you to the governor uh, for even um, considering, uh, you know, his proposals and what it is that he's doing with respect uh, to police accountability. Uh, but like I said at the press conference a few days ago, uh, it's extremely important uh, that we really take a hard look at professional licensing uh, of many of these uh, police officers as they go on down to post, uh, which is the entity that provides the accreditation and uh, certifications to officers. Um, you know, we talk a lot about having independent um, entities uh, that would provide investigation into many of these misconducts, uh, and that is specifically identifying uh, an inspector general or a chief in investigator officer, uh, which will serve as an in independent entity whose mission is to really investigate and prosecute uh, the alleged violations of a law enforcement um, officer. The other piece, and a lot of this uh, comes right out of the Black and Puerto Rican Caucus, a caucus that uh, I chair, um, taking a look at police discipline records, and making sure many of these records are public, uh, which currently they are not. Um, the use of force definition change, modifying conditions under which a police officer uh, can legally use deadly force uh, from times when it's reasonable uh, to when it's actually necessary. Uh, and that's extremely important uh, after we've just seen you know, the brutal killing of George Floyd and others um, at the hands of police officers. Uh, also, mandating de-escalation and crisis intervention methods uh, that clearly attempts to induce greater restraints from officers, likely making it um, uh, a stronger, um, uh, making it a little stronger, rather, when decisions uh, are made when it comes to uh, force. Um, and then, really right. quickly, just run through the last couple pieces of this, since I have the opportunity to talk talk about it, uh, is, is automatic dismissal, um, you know, when, when misconduct is actually deemed and, and justified, let's get rid of that officer. Um, changing uh, drug-free zones to becoming cop-free zones. Um, and, and lastly, um, making sure that none of what I just mentioned uh, could, could, could be collectively bargained away. Um, and so I know that's a lot. Oh, qualified immunity is another big piece as well. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff that we have to work on and, and a lot of meetings uh, that we have to have between all of our leadership and union heads and uh, working alongside the governor's office and the appropriate chairpersons of judiciary as well as public safety. Uh, we got a lot going on within the Brandon, I wanted to move you along here. I wanted to mention this to you. The Black and Puerto Rican Caucus, for which you co-chair, issued a memo on June 4th that said, quote, any special session must seriously look at accountability and transparency in policing, the expansion of voting rights, and the That's accessibility right. of health care care for which you call, quote, systems of oppression. Uh, what do you mean by that, and why would those issues need to be included in legislation? Yeah, I, um, you know, it's important that as we continue to respond to uh, decades of oppression and uh, disproportionate impact on communities of color, um, giving this time with number 45 attacking uh, the electoral process, uh, your right to vote, um, it's, it's important that we pass legislation that would allow people to vote by absentee ballot, mail in their votes uh, so that they could be counted in both the presidential as well as our, our 
state elections. Uh, and then when you talk about health care, I mean, on the hills of uh, or the height of this pandemic, we found very clear that communities of color are disproportionately impacted by the lack of access to health care. Uh, and specifically in this particular uh, special session, uh, we want to make sure uh, that uh, as we move forward in responding to COVID and its, and its impact on our communities, uh, we're really addressing the access piece. Um, and, and also for our immigrants. All right, Brandon, we have uh, less. Well. Brandon, we have less than five minutes. I want to try and get in a couple more questions. This idea of military equipment, uh, the governor put out an executive order banning the state from taking part in the 1033 program. Local departments voluntarily agreed to a 90-day moratorium, but there are some departments that say that there is a practical value to some of this equipment. Humvees that are used for off-road search and rescue, a thermal scope that's used to find lost people. So do you believe that this ban should be in totality? You know, I'm still in conversations with uh, many of the uh, experts and folks who are on the front line. Uh, but just my immediate response uh, to that uh, is we're not animals. Uh, we, as in the people, uh, and this military sort of way of doing business uh, is unacceptable. Uh, so I do believe that the moratorium at this point is appropriate until we've had some education on the matter and figure out how do we move forward from there. Police misconduct investigations, Brandon, do you believe that internal affairs can do that? I mean, should a police department really be policing itself or should we empower these citizen review boards? Yeah, as already mentioned earlier uh, with, the, with the points in terms of the specific points in this police accountability bill, um, I don't think police should police themselves. Um, I, I, I support wholeheartedly our review boards on both passing something from the state and also supporting municipalities, uh, uh, local city council, aldermen folks, uh, passing uh, legislation that supports that sentiment as well. All right. And what about this idea of defunding the police? I mean, we hear it a lot. What does it really mean? It's such a nebulous term. Sometimes people really mean abolishing a police department. Other times it's meant along the lines of reform and accountability. So how do you see uh, what's your definition of defunding the police? Yeah, I think you your latter point in terms of uh, really shifting or reallocating funds to areas within the department that could help to support community policing, um, providing additional dollars for body cameras, uh, vehicle cameras, et cetera. Uh, that's the true definition of, of reforming our police departments, not debunking them or defunding an entire department that for the most part, when I'm in trouble, I'm calling my local Hartford Police Department to help me. Uh, so I, I don't support those sentiments around defunding, but I do believe that the majority of our activists are fighting for, for reform within, uh, within our police departments, and I will support that wholeheartedly. All right. Hey, Brandon, I'm curious uh, your answer to this. I mean, do you believe that racism should be considered a public health emergency? And what would doing that actually do? Is that more symbolic or would that have a, a measurable, actionable impact? Yeah. And, and thanks for asking that question. Uh, I am a part of, of many groups uh, that have declared uh, that as our new civil rights issue of our time. Uh, and, you know, I think it, it, if I could just put it bluntly, it's an opportunity to say, look, we need to address this issue. And if we don't take this thing seriously, we're going to be back here again, talking the same uh, sort of talk on the issue. Uh, so yes, I do agree with them. Um, I think it is, uh, for starters, very ceremonial, uh, but it is, literally pushing policymakers to rethink uh, how we legislate uh, and, and to also include organizations like Health, health Equity Solutions uh, and using those types of groups to help us inform whatever policy uh, we're pushing forward in terms of uh, equitable po policy. Um, it, I support it, man. I don't even know how else to explain it, but I support it and um, it is something that I hope all of my colleagues would support. 
State Representative Brandon McGee, a Democrat representing Hartford and Windsor. Brandon, it is always great to sit down with you. Thanks for this uh, open and honest and transparent conversation. We'll see you later. Take care. Thank you. And we will see you next time on The Real Story. Be sure to tune in for the Fox 61 News tonight, starting at 10. Thanks for joining us.